Santos. Joining us now in the studio, Stephen McRaney. He's the executive director of the Mississippi Emergency Management Association. Stephen, thanks for coming in. In the rain. Yeah, it's good to be back. I, I heard you talking earlier about uh, you guys weren't traveling, and I said, well, here I am traveling up and down the road. So uh, it's all right, though. All right, so we were talking about uh, hurricane season, storm season. That still is uh, going on. Yeah, uh, it's through like, the end of October. Is it's that right? Not Officially, over yet. I I like to relax in November. Okay, Thanksgiving is a good day for me okay. when when we're uh, <laughs> when we're celebrating there. You know, it's it's one of those issues. It has been an abnormal year where we we have not had as many. We had a couple of tropical disturbances, three I think, that yep. uh, have 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 brewed up. But uh, if you look at uh, 2021 to 2020, uh, November. That 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 August to September time, yeah. fifteen storms. Yeah. Um, last year, the year before, uh, about uh, fourteen storms. So out of the numbers that they're saying that we might get, we're still in prime time. Okay. And uh, we've, we've we've done all our preparations. We've uh, had all of our state agencies come in and train with us, updating our plans, just getting ready. What do we do well last year? What do we do uh, nominal? And so we could shore those things up. I got you. I guess officially through the end of November. So that's but, that's my date. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Have, have we ever had any kind of major storm in the month of November? I just can't remember. That. You know, at the first, you've got uh, some that that uh, come in and, and hit tropical. They'll get named and they hit tropical uh, storm status, which is still a lot of rain. You know, tropical storms are just like kind of what, what Texas is kind of dealing with sure. right now. You've got that. Uh, uh, little um, activity that went north Mexico up into uh, Texas, and now you look at that rain. Uh, you know, around here uh, we're looking maybe three inches in some of the worst places uh, in, in a maybe a three to six hour time frame. That's an event in the state of Mississippi, and, and it hasn't rained on us all summer long. To in any a deluge like we're possibly going to get today, tomorrow, and next week, it's just the bands are right over us, uh, yeah. right in the south, southeastern conference. I can't remember it being uh, this sort of rainy, active in uh, August. Pardon me, August. I mean, normally it's it's hot, it's humid. It's sultry. Yes. It's kind of oppressive. But, yeah, uh, this is where you go to the Friday night football game and you lose 10 pounds. <laughs> I mean, you sweat right. in the stands, and uh, uh, football players were normally, uh, you know, those games going on, we're taking breaks with them, looking at the refs uh, for life safety and, and, and keeping those athletes pumped full of water. Yeah. But right now, I mean, we're, we're, we're into a rainy type of, of August, and uh, yeah. 73 degrees, that's, that's very abnormal for us. Yeah, don't, don't recall that ever. Okay, so what about the possibility of flooding? We concerned about that? Absolutely. Flash flooding, if you look at what uh, happens in Texas, the, the their soil makeup can't take it and can't soak it up. And we've, uh, over the past two to three weeks, we've had small rains that, that have come through and been able to handle it. But when you get one of these soakers that sits on top of you, uh, that's when all the local emergency managers and uh, those fire departments, we have search and rescue rigs that are ready. Uh, we've already rung the bell on it, and, and uh, they're, they're standing by. We're, we're watching every tributary in the state. Yeah. Uh, we've got a monitor system on those, and, okay. and we constantly watch that at MEMA to know where the flood stages are, where the water's going to go at, say, 17, 15 feet on some of these creeks and rivers and whatnot. So we're very attuned to uh, as that water starts building up and starts coming down. Yeah, that uh, would seem to be a problem given the amount in such a short period of time. And, and it seems like we're approaching a period where the ground is pretty saturated, too. Yes. Uh, given yes. the amount we've had uh, over the last couple of weeks, it just seems very, very unusual around Mississippi. Right. What sorts of uh, projects, uh, Stephen, you guys got going on at MEMA there? Well, Anything we, were, we need to know about? Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we were able to resurrect the program uh, a few years back under uh, Robert Latham, the executive director then. Uh, they had a, a uh, individual safe room program. So uh, we worked with the governor's office, uh, explained to him what we were going to try to do to resurrect that program, and we've done it. So uh, uh, we opened that up about two to three weeks ago, and within one week, we got 600 applications for individual wow. safe rooms. Wow. Uh, and, and we did that in the area of the backwater flooding. So there's about eight counties, and that's Clay, Humphreys, Issaquina, Lowndes, Monroe, Sharkey, Warren, and Yazoo County. So we started a small package. That's where that disaster happened. We get mitigation funds after we actually get a federal declaration, and we um, uh, got that ready for them. And uh, the applications came in quick. Now the process is we're going to get those applications to FEMA, start getting those reviewed. It's a lot of paperwork. But you, the individual homeowner can get up to 3500 
or 75 hmm. percent of putting in an individual safe room so it's all about life safety yeah. it's a it's an opportunity to bring that program back and for those individuals that that want them uh, we're able to, to facilitate that and get that done, and it's a, a, not a long process. It takes about 60 days possibly to get that to FEMA, get that approved. You can get your, your license contractor to put that in, and um, we can and give them up to $3,500. Hmm. Wow, interesting. So speaking of FEMA, explain how MEMA and FEMA, how, how do they interact? How do they collaborate? How do they integrate, let's say, if there is – an emergency major hurricane comes through what how how are the lines kind of determined there? yeah we we we're actually we're fema and mema were aligned almost exactly the same you've got uh uh gracious Sheck is the director of region four uh and that is the uh, southeastern conference as i call it of okay. disasters uh and uh so we have leadership that li- aligns together and i have monthly calls if not uh, every other week with her uh, as well as all uh, eight of uh, the, the states within this region, we get on and talk together. Okay. And we talk about common problems, whether it's uh, rebuilding communities, yeah. uh, whether it's mitigation and things of that nature. Our operations staff is talking directly to, and we provide information on a daily basis to FEMA, and FEMA turns around and does a national look back to us. What what are, what are things affecting around us? What's coming? Texas, okay. uh, the yeah. water coming there. So it's, uh, it's really a great uh, a share back and forth as far as um, – uh, assessing threats, uh, making sure we've got the right personnel problem. They'll come in pre-stage during uh, hurricane season before I get one. I usually bring in an incident management assistant team, okay. an IMAT team, as they, or they're called from FEMA, uh, bringing in logisticians and others that we might need to augment any type of uh, response that we need. But in the event an emergency is declared, is it is it clear where the authority lies for various decisions that have to be made? Is there confusion on that? Or no how? confusion. Uh, I was the state coordinating officer before I became the executive director. So okay. if any disaster happens in the state of Mississippi and it's declared, that state coordinating officer is the person. Okay. They work directly for the governor. Uh, comes. I don't really come out from under MEMA, but I've, I've got two right now that I assign to disasters, and they work lock, lockstep with the federal coordinating officer. Okay. But it's it's the state, and it's the state of Mississippi in that response. And I've, I've had to flex that a time or two. I got we're going to do it the Mississippi way okay. and uh, take care of our citizens because they're number one. Sure. Period. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right, so what about at the local level, the local jurisdictions? How do you well, interact got with 80, those folks? I call them the 83. Okay. And that is uh, the 82 counties and uh, the, all, all the emergency management directors there, and uh, also the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians, which okay. is in 14 counties. So uh, all of those, we have training sessions. Every one of them have uh, a, a training program that they complete okay. uh, to do that, as well as we've done uh, this last year. We did uh, shelter operations. Let's let's get that together where we have something firm. Where we're going to depend on partners, the Red Cross and others uh, that, that come in and assist us. But those those frontline emergency managers do it every day in the counties. Okay. And then I sit up here at the state level, monitor, provide equipment if they ask for it. Uh, we EMAC, the Emergency Management Assistance Compact from other states bringing in. Uh, we just got back from uh, California and hung, hung another flag. Uh, in, in MEMA, we've got a, probably about 25 to 30 and there's other states that we've gone and helped okay uh, we had helicopter crews that went out there and flew and then uh, firefighter crews that went as well so even the states uh kentucky right now uh, i've been talking to the executive director up there i said when you run short of manpower i'm here for the long term and we'll come and help you so tennessee's been helping some i'm i'm chalked in the next block in case they need any more support and they'll come and do the same for me so okay. we, we share those assets and we've even had our local emergency management directors we've sent them to florida on emac missions to go and help okay uh before so we're mississippi's robust we are this is uh prime time for us we're we're good at it uh because it happens a lot in yeah. the state but yeah. But uh, uh, without that front line of those emergency managers, it, it, MEMA alone can't, can't handle it. And, it. and it stands to reason, does it not? It makes sense that they've got more knowledge Absolutely. Uh, of that local area, and, uh, and, and that's invaluable. And, and oh, you're is. there to support it and provide resources, assets, et cetera. Where I think it's going to flood is not necessarily the case because I'm, I'm looking at geographic stuff. They know where it's going to flood. Yeah. If they get X amount of inches yeah, of rain, they know this road's going to get uh, flooded, and so they go ahead and block it off. And I'm wondering why. Well, four hours later, there it is. The water rises up because they know uh, the land. They know the shortcuts. They know the back roads, and uh, it, it's all about them. 
this uh, we got just a little bit left here. You see, you hear the music, but this structure is that improved, Stephen, over time. Like since Katrina, for example, I know we learned so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That, the, uh, we're part of uh, McDEMA, which is the Mississippi uh, Civil Defense and Emergency Management Association. Yeah. Uh, all of FEMA, uh, MEMA is. And, and just building those relationships. You know where the strong points are. You know where the weak points are. And you know that if you need a piece of equipment, the county next door's got it. Makes sense. So it's awesome. Makes sense. Stephen, appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. Always good to hear from you. Stephen McCraney, Executive Director of the Mississippi Emergency Management Association, has been our guest on Middays. We'll take a break and come right back. <laughs> 